What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Get Beamed and today it's a good day. I'm bringing you another video. It's going to be my second runner up. My boy KJ the Barber. I actually work next to him. I met him last year and today he's going to be bringing you a video on how to do a mid fade which was some people call a drop fade. Um, this was a real dope video. I shot this video like two or three days ago. Just chopped it up this morning. We doing the vlog right now just to let you all know that uh, I got some more heat coming to y'all. I got a lot of more other younger barbers that's lined up. And yes, I got my own video coming soon to YouTube to get back in my rhythm again. I know a lot of people been asking me when was I gonna drop something, even though you all appreciate what every what I'm dropping for everybody else. Um, I'm definitely coming back real soon. I'm just taking my time because I want to give y'all the best of quality. And in these videos with these younger barbers, some of them are putting me on their schedule. Some of them are not, so they are moving at a pace, you know, to keep their clients coming in and out. Um, but uh, I really want y'all to know that, you know, this uh, this movement that we're doing, hashtag the beam team is moving. I got a lot of requests from a lot of younger barbers that's in the Chicago area that, that want to be a part of this journey, and you know. Um, we extending this branch to, to, to the barber community for everybody to uh, to get a, a dose of what we call the Bean Team. Um, so I just want to thank everybody, all my subs. Check out this video and uh, let me know how y'all feel in the comments. Yo, what's going on YouTube? Right here's my boy KJ the Barber Information on Instagram. Please check him out. He got a bunch of dope cuts on there. And right here, y'all already know, is hashtag the Bean Team. It's the new movement. If you ain't with us, you against us. Let's get it. So right here, we got the before on my boy that's in the chair, man. You know, he, you know, he just got from out of town. He looking kind of rough. KJ gonna get him together though. Give me that last little spin just to show y'all what he's working with on the canvas. We're going to start this thing off with them T-edges upside down going a half inch above the ear. Best part about a drop fade, you don't bring the back of it up. You only you only start a half inch above the ear and then you drop the fade down behind the ear. Y'all will see eventually when he turns the client on the difference between the drop fade and the actual ball fade. So right there, he dropped the fade down. If it was a ball fade, he would have brought the line all the way up to where he started the initial guideline on the sides. So you always want to keep it real consistent, man. Don't really, uh, don't overwork yourself with these drop fades. These drop fades are a little tricky to some people, man. But well, we, well, we got the recipe to all of this stuff, man. These drop fades are way more simple. I feel like it's a, it's a mental and a psychological type thing when it comes to these drop fades because people drop them. So the illusion is a little bit off. So right here, he got these clippers all the way open. Those are the end. This master's all the way open. And, uh, you know, just staying real consistent with the, it, creating that second guideline. Stay real consistent. Flicking out with the wrist, holding the clippers comfortably, and working. Spin that chair just a little bit to give you a better view. And keep it consistent, man. I really want to uh I want to tell y'all though man the Q&A is is coming together very well. I've held out on it because I've been waiting to get as many questions as I can. I think I got enough questions now so the Q&A is definitely going to be put together. I'm going to answer the questions in very detailed. So right here we starting the third guideline, which is barely a guideline, but this is the number 0 guard, the 116th all the way open. Well not all the way open, it's halfway open flicking the wrist out because the client hair is at a one and a half length I want to say right now it looks like a one and a half so that one sixteenth halfway open not really going to damage it but it's going gonna, it's gonna to give it a better illusion to the blend you notice this KJ coming in at an angle but he's flicking out it's not creating a guideline but really hitting the end of those hairs to like bring that fade all the way together and then he flipped them clippers upside down fully closed and watch how it knocked that line out it's crazy man brush one cut one brush one cut one man this is gonna be a beautiful outcome man I was really happy with how this video came out 
and I really was glad to put this video together because I got loyal subscribers. I really, man, I really love y'all, man. I love what, what I got going on with this channel, man. Y'all pushing me to go further with this channel. Y'all making me want to do this more. I didn't even think YouTube was going to have this effect on me, man. But it's y'all out there. Y'all are my family. Hashtag the Bean Team. Y'all are the ones that are pushing me to be great, to do great, man. So, so everything on this channel, man, I owe it to y'all, man. If it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be who I am right now. So right here, my boy got them clippers all the way closed. Just getting that hair all the way down. And that is a one guard right there, all the way closed. Did you see how it blends all the way together? You don't have to overwork yourself. That's the best part about this barbering thing. When you get comfortable and experienced, you eliminate steps. This is how the cuts come out way more quicker. They come out, he could do this cut in 30 minutes opposed to somebody else doing it in an hour and get the same results. When you eliminate steps, you become more efficient, you become more quicker, and that creates way more revenue because you can get to way more clients in the shop. So right here, he attacking that first guideline, that ball line that he made with the masters fully closed. Fully closed. Keep it consistent on them strokes. Don't push that line too high. You see how he's staying in that little ram of strokes that he got. Do not push that fade higher because if you do, especially on the client hair like this who got that real delicate curly uh, hair, you're going to make a, a real tough indentation. So right here, you see, look, keeping it consistent, small strokes, trying to attack that bottom line. Now, what some people might get scared of right here is the Clippers can't take out that bottom line. And it's because he used the Clippers against the grain. So it's always tips and tricks to erase those lines. Um, and we're going to show you in this video how to really erase that line. So right here, he's still attacking the bottom of that fade with the mask is closed. Small strokes always get the job done. Not going too high, keeping it very, very, very consistent. And um, right here, staying and doing the same thing. You don't really want to push that fade too high, but you want to be able to to solidify that first notch at the bottom of the fade. And right here, spot mopping. The clip is on the second notch going just a little bit higher than him what he did with the first notch really working that fade man you can see this thing coming together even though it's not done you can see this thing transitioning man it's nice bro so keeping the thing consistent I really wanted to address one thing man I really appreciate y'all subs man Y'all really got me pushing, man, and going to the next level. It's because of y'all, man. I'm telling you. Can't thank my subs enough. If it wasn't for y'all, I'd just still be a normal barber in the shop. So right here, he opened the masters all the way up. And taking taking it up to that, that second guideline that he had. That's the whole tips and tricks to fade. It's all about lever action and flicking the wrist. Never lay the blades flat on the head. And uh, this is some, the reason KJ laid the, the blades flat on his head was because that one was already open there initially. So it wouldn't do nothing. But right here, you got that zero guard all the way open. Not pushing that fade high. Not gonna push it high at all. Keep the zero guard open and you can tap the edge of that line with that one gonna meet that zero, which is the one and 16th guard. All the way around the head. Then right here, he's doing something that we call a cleanup method. He got the clippers all the way open, and obviously he's not cutting with the grain, but he's 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 tilting the clippers and coming down at a tilt angle, and it's grazing the hair as opposed to cutting the hairs because the hair is a one up top, even though the clippers are one open. If he was to go flat at the top of the head, he'd create a ball spot. Here's my favorite part right here. This is how you knock that bottom line out. Whatever you put the line in with is what you take the line out. Same thing with them edges. Flick that wrist, hit the bottom of that line, gonna knock it smooth out. You see him knocking that line out. Very clean. 
especially right here on the left side, the line is gone. You only can see it towards the back of the head right here where the video gets real clear. And you just keep working that fade, man. Level close. This thing is coming together very well, man. Very, very well. We just shifted them to the to the two notch, two and a half basically, somewhere around the three now. I'm not pushing the fade too high. Yep, he's on the third notch of him. So right here he's using his line and spritz, which basically locks the hair into the place. Uh, wants to attack the line. Even though the fade isn't done, this is the biggest trick you ever see in barbering. I do not know why, but it's like you could think the cut is done, and soon as you put a line in on the cut, lines just pop up out of nowhere. It's crazy how it works, and it feel like magic, but it's the best thing that could have ever happened to the barbering game. But man, them T edges is hitting. Look at the back of that beard line. He got that joint straight. Right here, tap that line in just a few times, not too hard. Got them wall detailers. Look at it, spitting that white line. A lot of people think that it was the spritz or was the clippers. Obviously, his clippers I modified, and the spritz played a part in it. But to really get your clients lining to spit that white like that, have them wash and scrub their hair before the haircut. As you can see the sink in the background, we had the client wash his hair and he really scrubbed the lining so to get that hair as dry as possible so it holds no oils. And then with the spritz and modified clippers at the same time, as soon as you touch the lining, it's going to knock the hair off, which is what we call a tap and go method. I don't got to work too hard, man. I'm telling people. You do not have to work too hard. It's things like washing the hair which eliminates you from working too hard on the line. When they wash the hair, the hair is clean, the hair is dry and cuts perfect. So with tap and go motion, you don't have to have the sharpest clippers in the world. You can have some regular clippers and tap and go and they're going to do work. And look at that curve. Whew. That boy working, man. A lot of people don't even know how he did that because he balled the sides out. It's about having them wash their hair, man. Washing their hair, got that got that skin and hair dry as possible. It's gonna spit that white line. Even though it's a drop fade and it's really not like a connected lineup or whatever. Oh, people where I'm from in Chicago, we always we always create that curve line, even if the curve isn't there. I don't know. I think it's just a Chicago thing. Cause see, look, he go right against the grain with the liners again. Like, why even create the curve? You gonna go against the liners? It's just something that we do, man. Did you see that fade looking real clean, man? Look, applying pressure on that lineup, man. See that lineup, man? That lineup, perfect C. Cleaning it up. We're flipping them uh, detailers upside down. And then that fade up some. So right here he got that. He got hair fibers, man, with that uh, fiber applicator. And the fibers that he was using is the Dr. Fillion fibers, a mixture of darkest brown and black, using the card as um as his borderline. So he don't spray them to the forehead anything. Use a card to keep it inside the boundaries. A lot of people right here, man, I get a bunch of slack in my comments and stuff thinking this is airbrush. It's not. It's hair fibers, which is color cotton crushed down. All hair fibers isn't color cotton, but the, the company Dr. Fillion Company is dedicated to African-American hair, and cotton is the closest thing to our hair. Stuff like Topic and Kabuki fibers are made out of keratin, which is better for Hispanic and Caucasian hair. A lot of people don't understand that because they teach you in school is that African American hair coils and appears to be thicker than what it really is. And that's why the cotton, I mean the fibers made out of cotton, gives it that fuller look. So he just used some pump it up spray to lock those fibers in and apply pressure with them liners. Look, it don't even look like he need a razor. Applying the straight pressure, man. This is the beam team right here. This is the beam team, man. We bring it. This is what we bring it. Nothing but classic clean cuts. My boy KJ really working this lineup right now, man. Fade looking pretty nice. Right here, when we start that razor work off, always stretch that skin. Look, it's spitting a white line. It's not because of no holding spray. He didn't spray his face. He had him wash his face. So all of that dead skin. And 
and stuff like that is, is what's right there. Look at this girl right here. This is the client's girl. Look how she looking. Yeah, that's how females look when they see they, they boyfriends getting a real clean cut. My boy KJ right here. Really establishing that line work with that race. Got him right here cleaning it up with the uh, liners. Then got my boy right here working towards that curve with that razor. Always be comfortable with the razor. Don't scrape. Stretch that skin. Tilt that razor at a 45 degree angle. Bring that thing back to the lining, man. And it's that simple. Using the razor not hard, so he dusts it off. This is a method a lot of people don't use. We use the liners, then straight razor, then we dust off the whole the white ashy look, and then we go back and finish with our liners. The finish with your liners is way stronger than finishing with your um, your straight razor. Look, <sighs> clean man, real clean. So right here, you can catch me in the background shooting some camera action. And just got my boy KJ finishing up on the razor right quick. And I'm going to tap him with the liners one more time. Just to show y'all how hard you finish strong, man. The bean team. And there you go with the mid fade, a.k.a. the drop fade. So I want to thank every one of my loyal subscribers and everybody that will subscribe please hit that subscribe button and to check out more of my dope videos please click those two links and also if you haven't subscribed click the subscribe button man and see what the beam team have to offer thanks a lot i appreciate it may god bless